Human subject research is arguably the backbone of human-computer interaction, so it is no surprise that researchers spend a lot of time looking for ways to make it easier. And among these methodologies, remote studies have been especially transformative. Instead of bringing participants into the lab, you can recruit participants from a much larger pool, host your study online, get results faster, and most importantly, do all of this remotely. Very useful if you find yourself in the global pandemic. That is, as long as you can find participants that meet your study requirements. For extended reality research, you often need a headset and controllers, a powerful computer to run it on, and a room big enough for lightsaber battles. Finding participants with access to these requirements is difficult using traditional crowdsourcing techniques. This contributes to XR research being conducted primarily in lab, which is a problem if you want to run a collaborative study, as you will need several sets of equipment that will become expensive and impractical quickly or if a global pandemic prevents you from bringing participants into the lab in the first place. Well, if you can't bring participants to the lab, bring the lab to your participants. And with the help of social VR platforms, that's exactly what we did. Social VR platforms are distributed synchronous virtual environments where VR communities can chat, play, and create together. Most importantly for us, they also often support some level of user-generated content in the form of custom virtual environments and avatars. So the concept is simple. Implement your study on a social VR platform, conduct the study with participants recruited from said platform, analyze the results, and publish your paper. But is this actually feasible? And what types of studies can you do? And will you even get valid results? To answer these questions, we conducted two replication studies using the social VR platform VR chat. In our first study, we wanted to test quantitative research methods, so we chose to replicate Fitt's Law in VR by Clark et al. Our experiment world was implemented using Unity plus the VR chat SDK. Participants were invited into our world and asked to switch to a standardized avatar. Participants were then instructed to complete a series of selection tasks with targets changing in size and position within the interaction space. There is no way to connect to external servers from VR chat. So to save the results, we displayed the information on a wall, took several screenshots, and used OCR to extract the data from the images. Our results support the findings of the original work, Fitz Law still fits, and we even found evidence that supports the claim that user experience and better depth views would lead to faster selection times. In our second study, we wanted to test qualitative research methods as well as the potential for social VR to make collaborative studies easier. We decided that collaborative coupling on tabletop displays from Tang et al. would be interesting. Even though the original did not use VR, tabletop displays are a common paradigm in VR applications. Once again, we implemented the study using Unity and the VRChat SDK. This time, we recruited pairs of participants to complete a series of individual and collaborative tasks using either the filter interaction or the lens interaction. We recorded these sessions from an overhead view as well as the proctor view and then analyze the footage to code the participants' behavior according to the codes described in the original paper. We found that the behavior of VR participants often matched the behavior described in the original study, but notably, our participants preferred different table arrangements and spent less time disengaged from the task. Overall, we concluded that many of the concepts established in the original work are transferable to the VR context. Primarily, global perspective sharing is important for collaborative tasks, so yes, Social VR platforms can be used to conduct remote, synchronous, and collaborative VR studies, and if done correctly, will produce valid results. If you want a more detailed guide on how we achieved all of this, or want to take a deeper look at our results, please see our full paper. You can also find all of our supplemental material on OSF. There is still a lot of work to be done towards establishing remote XR research methods, and it is going to take a community effort to achieve this. While our approach worked well for this research, I would not call it a long-term solution to this problem, but it has the potential to become one. What needs to come next is either official support for research studies from existing social VR platforms, or a bespoke platform dedicated to remote XR studies. Regardless of which path we take, I believe that the future of remote XR studies will be a lot more social.